Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I've got the all new Babolat Pure Aero 2023 to review for you guys. Now this is one of the most popular tennis rackets on the market, so I was super excited to get my hands on this one and give it a spin on the court to see how it played. I'm gonna share all my thoughts about this Babolat Pure Aero 2023 with you guys. Make sure you guys watch this video all the way to the end so that you guys can see the mic score. In the mic score, I'm gonna give this racket a score in six different categories. Each category is gonna be rated out of 10 points. At the end, I'll put all those together to give it a mic score out of 60, and I'll show you guys exactly how this racket compares to all the other rackets I've reviewed on this channel. If you guys enjoy reviews like this one, please gently tap the like button right below this video. That's a thumbs up button right there. You guys can also hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of the future uploads. I've got a ton of racket reviews coming out this year as well as other fun tennis videos. I tried my hand at making my own tennis apparel. It is up for sale in my online shop and the link to the no rest tennis apparel shop will be in the pinned comment below. With all that being said, Let's jump into the review of this Babolat Pure Aero 2023. The first thing we're gonna start off with in this review is the specs of this racket. We're gonna go through each part of the specs and I'll tell you guys exactly what those numbers mean. Right off the bat, you guys can notice that this is a pretty big head size. This is a 100 square inch racket. So what that's gonna do, is gonna give you a ton of room on the string bed here in order to make contact with the ball. Also, it means a big sweet spot on the racket. So the contact is gonna feel pretty good even if you're missing the center of the racket just due to the size of this head shape right here. So for intermediate players, that's gonna be awesome to give you a little bit of forgiveness on the racket. And even for advanced players, if you're a little bit off center on the ball, it's gonna still feel very powerful and pretty crisp off this racket right here. The next thing we're looking at on the spec sheet is the length of this racket. Now there are some oversized rackets, but this is not one of them. So this is 27 inches, which is the standard length of a racket. The unstrung weight of this racket is 300 grams which I find is pretty good, especially for intermediate players. It's not too heavy, quite easy to handle around the court. That weight combined with the aerodynamics of this racket being the pure aero makes it feel super light on the court, which is really nice if you're somebody who has some arm problems. The balance of this racket is four points head light, but I can tell you guys just based on the design of this racket, it moves through the air super quickly, very whippy, feels like it's even more head light than what the spec sheet says. The swing weight on this racket is 323, which in my opinion actually feels a little higher based on the unstrung weight of this racket. Usually a racket coming in at 300 grams might not have such a high swing weight, but the balance of this racket allows it to really plow through the ball well, as you guys can see in the swing weight being at 323. Next thing we'll look at is the flex, which is rated at 66. So as some of you guys might know, the flex ratings go from 50 to around 80, and the lower the number means the more flexible the racket, and the higher the number, the stiffer the racket is. This one comes in at a flex rating of 66, which is kind of in the middle, slightly skewed a little bit to the more flexible side, which makes it pretty nice to play with, even if you're gonna be out on court for a long period of time. In terms of the beam width on this racket, this one goes from 23 millimeters to 26 down in the middle. So it starts off thin, widens through the middle, and then tapers off again to 23 millimeters down at the bottom. Now the reason that these two areas here are actually thicker than the top and the bottom is because this is where you want the stability to be when you're making contact with the ball. Having that beam width a little bit wider here on the corners makes it so it's less wobbly as you're hitting the ball, whether it's a return or a ground stroke. And having it thinner down through the bottom and top allows it to have great aerodynamics as you're swinging the racket. And finally, the big thing here that's gonna really be important is a string pattern. Most rackets will come in a string pattern of 18 by 20 or 16 by 19. As you guys can see on the spec sheet, this is a 16 by 19 racket, which means it's gonna have quite a bit of power compared to those 18 by 20 rackets, which are a dense, tight string pattern. One thing I thought was interesting when reading about this racket on the Babolat website, Babolat actually wanted to make the string pattern a little bit more dense on this 2023 version of the racket compared to the last generation of the Pure Aero. So what that's gonna do, it's gonna give you good power being a 16 by 19, but since the space between the strings is smaller, you're gonna get a little bit of a boost in control compared to the previous version of this racket. Now that we've gone over the specs of this racket together, I'm gonna take you guys on court with me as I play with this racket and I'll give you my first impressions of what I thought about the Babolat Pure Aero 2023. First thing I noticed is a negative, and I hate to break it to you if you guys use this racket, but to me it felt super cheap right off the bat. Now the thing that made me feel that way is that as soon as I started playing mini court with this racket, I started hearing dinging off the racket. Now I don't play with dampeners, so you know having a little bit of a ping or a ding off the string bed is normal when you're hitting at a little bit of a slower pace, 
But what was wrong with this one is that the sound was not coming from the strings. I found that those vibrations and that pinging noise was actually happening in the frame of this racket. Now, I don't know what's going on there, if it's something with the grommets being out of alignment, but this is a brand new racket here. I think it's only been played with a couple times by some other people. So to have that sound coming off the racket was a little bit concerning to me, considering how expensive these rackets are. If I'm paying over $250 for a racket, I'm hoping that it's gonna be solid and feel great and not feel like it's falling apart on the first couple playthroughs that I have with it. I actually know this is quite a common occurrence in these Babylon Pure Arrow rackets. As another good friend of mine, he also uses a older version of the Pure Arrow, and he's been complaining about the exact same thing with his rackets. It sounds like there's something floating around or broken inside the frame of the racket. So I'm hoping that's not what's happening with this new line. If it is, it's a little bit disappointing. That little rattle that it was making was not affecting the shot, thankfully, and I enjoyed the rest of my hitting session with it. As I actually started hitting the ball a little bit harder, I don't know if uh, something was happening on the strings with them moving around, but I found that that rattling actually subsided as I was playing. In terms of the actual play of this racket, like I said, it moves through the air super quick, as you guys would expect from a pure arrow, super aerodynamic, so it makes it really whippy. These rackets are known for their spin generation, and I found that that was the absolute best part of this racket. You can get a massive amount of spin with this racket with the 16 by 19 string pattern. Even though they tightened it a little bit, you still get huge amounts of spin with this racket. I was definitely trying to channel my inner Rafa with this one, trying to get some of those whippy loopy balls to go into the court and it was working out really, really well. When you get a good handle on the ball, especially on the backhand side, I found that this is where this racket really excelled. If you can take advantage of that top spin that you can generate with this racket, you're gonna be loving it. Another thing I really liked about this racket is that it was really good pretty much from all aspects of the court. I enjoyed hitting my ground strokes with it, whether it was a top spin, flat or a slice shot. I found that the racket handled all variety of shots really well. It was also really stable on serves, returns, even at net. Now that was something that I found was a little bit lacking in the previous version. I think something that might help with that is a string pattern. It gives you a little bit more of a controlled shot off of the volleys which was really nice. And I found that my volleys were pretty crisp and accurate with this racket. And same goes for my serves. I found that I was able to really let go of the racket, whip it through the ball, and it was quite accurate in terms of my serve. So that was really nice to see as well. This racket being a 100 square inch racket with that open string pattern also made it quite powerful. I found that when I was in good position and was able to take a full swing at the ball, I got huge power from this racket. Definitely a lot more than with my regular racket, which is the Yonex V-Core 95. I got a ton more miles per hour with this one, so that was nice to be able to hit some more powerful shots and get my opponent off balance a little bit easier than with my own racket. That spin that I mentioned earlier also was really helpful when it comes to controlling the ball. It allowed me to play some defensive shots, keep the ball in play, and even on the more aggressive one, I knew that if I just piled on the top spin, I'd be safe with my shot. And when you feel like you can hit hard and keep the ball in, that just builds confidence throughout a match. Let's jump into the mic score of this racket right now, and I'll show you guys exactly how it compares to all the other rackets I've reviewed on this channel. The first thing we're gonna take a look at is the styling of the racket. If I'm gonna be spending a ton of money on a racket, I wanna make sure that it looks good. So to me, styling is important. But remember, this is just the mic score. So if you guys have other things that you value, you can tally up your own score at home and let me know in the comments below how this racket would score in your scoring system. Starting off with the styling, when I first saw pictures of this online, I really did not like the styling of it at all. I thought it looked horrible, but luckily in person, this racket looks a lot better. This racket doesn't photograph well, but in person, I really like how the new paint job looks. Now, one thing I really like about it that doesn't really come through as well in the photos is this camo pattern that they've got going on here. Now, I used to play a lot of Call of Duty and it seems like one of those camo patterns that would be an unlockable in the game. So to me, that was a little bit nostalgic, but I like it nonetheless. I'll try to bring this up a little closer. Maybe on my camera, it might look a little bit better. Hopefully you guys can see some of that camo pattern that's going on right there. And those details also carry on in the top of the racket, which actually looks really good in person. But like I said, on camera and on Instagram and things like that, 
doesn't really come across as nice, just looks a little bit muddied since those details don't come out as well. The only thing I don't like about the design is that the way that they glossed the racket makes it look very plasticky. Now it makes it look a little bit cheaper. And like I said, this racket is not cheap. So when you're paying that much, you wanna look like you have a premium product. And to me, this looks like it could be like a Walmart racket, unfortunately, just based on the type of paint that they're using here. So for those reasons that I've listed, that's why I gave it a seven out of 10 in styling. Next up is the power of this racket. Like I said, this racket, when you can connect with the ball clean, it is a great power racket. You can really push the ball through the court with ease and that spin gives it a little bit of extra push through the court. Now, this isn't as powerful as something like a pure drive, which is made really with power in mind, but it is still a very powerful racket. In the right hands, you'll be able to hit winners with this racket, no problem. For those reasons, I gave it an eight out of 10 in power. Next up is the maneuverability of this racket. Of course, you guys know being the pure aero, this is gonna be a super maneuverable racket. I mean, the whole design principle of this racket is to make it as aerodynamic as possible and to make it swing as quickly as possible. And they definitely achieve that. As you guys can see, it is tapered down through the neck. This is something common in all the generations of the aero. Stays the same here. But like I said, they also taper it up at the top and the way that it goes all the way around thins out towards the edges of the frame. It's just a great design to get this racket moving quickly through the air. I had no issues at net going from backhands to forehands. It worked out super nice. Also not a super heavy racket coming in at 300 grams on strong makes it really easy to use and move around through the court and through the air. And for a big 100 square inch racket like this, Having that great maneuverability is really impressive. I'm giving it an eight out of 10 in maneuverability. Next up is the feel of this racket. It's definitely improved over the last generation, but it is not the most crisp racket you're gonna be playing with. It's not something like a Pro Staff or even like my V-Core 95 where you feel really connected with the ball and you know exactly what's going on on the string bed. This one right here, because of that big head size and because of the lower weight, the racket doesn't really communicate with you as well as those rackets that I've mentioned. For the most part, you know exactly what to expect with this racket, be it on serve, ground strokes, or volleys. So for those reasons, I gave it a seven out of 10 in feel. Finally, it is the cool factor of this racket. So for the cool factor, what I'm looking for is what are the unique characteristics of this racket that's separated from all the other ones on the shelf? One thing that I look for is the player endorsements because one thing every tennis player likes to do is to try to imagine imagine themselves as their favorite player. So one really nice thing about this racket is that there are a ton of players who endorse this racket right here. Some of them actually use variations of this mold. Others are using different rackets with a paint job, but it's still cool that you can see this racket on TV a lot. I think that adds to the cool factor. One of the things I actually think takes away from it a little bit is that this is not the most unique version of this racket. You can actually get this racket in a different paint job, which is the Rafa Nadal edition of this racket, which in my opinion, I think looks way better. The color combination they had on that one, plus the fact that it's Rafa's endorsed racket makes it cooler. So for those reasons, I gave this racket an eight out of 10 in the cool factor. So finally, when we tally all those categories in the mic score, this racket ends up with a score of 46 out of 60 in the mic score. So as you guys can see, this fits right in between the Head Speed Pro from 2022 and the Yonex E-Zone 98 from 2020. And I know guys, I gotta review the new version of the E-Zone. I promise you guys that one's coming soon. As you guys can see, this one kind of fits in the middle of the pack. But of course, that's just my opinion. If you guys are looking for a racket that matches the things I was talking about, like a ton of spin, some forgiveness, then this racket could score way higher on your list and it's definitely worth checking out. And if you guys are interested in checking this racket out, maybe buying it or buying some other tennis gear, Make sure you guys check my link to the racket guys in the description of this video. All right, guys, that is gonna wrap up my review of the Babolat Pure Aero 2023. I hope that this video was informative. If it was, please leave a like on this video. It helps my channel out tremendously. And of course, guys, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of the future videos. And if you're looking for more ways to support my channel, you guys can shop my new merch at norestapparel.ca and you guys will find that link in the pinned comment below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out and keep swinging. <laughs>